In this video, we will be building a seed signer, which is a fully open source DIY hardware wallet. This is part one of the seed signer series and will only deal with the actual build and setup. In the next few videos, I'll show you how to actually use the thing with a whole bunch of different wallets. You can purchase all the parts yourself, which can be found at seedsigner.com forward slash hardware. And I've got all four parts ready to go. So let's take a look at them. Here are all the parts we need to build a seed signer. Firstly, we have the Raspberry Pi Zero. Now I bought mine with these pins pre-installed, but yours may come with them uninstalled. So try buy a board with these pins pre-installed, otherwise you'll have to attach them by yourself. Next, we have this LCD hat. So this will act as the screen of our seed signer. And it also has controls over here. So three buttons and this little joystick. Here we have a Pi Zero compatible camera. So this will be our camera for signing offline. Here we have an SD card. So the SD card needs to be a minimum of uh, four gigs, but I got a 32 gig because no one sells four gigs anymore. Finally, we need a case. So this will actually house our uh, seat signer. Now this case isn't completely necessary, but without the case, things will look ugly and it won't be so compact. So if you can't get hold of a case, it's not the end of the world, but it's definitely better to have one. This particular case is the open pill case. You can head over to Seed Signer's website to get the name of everything here. And you can also see where to buy one of these 3D printed cases. Now that we have all the parts needed to build a Seed Signer, what we're gonna do is put the Seed Signer software on our SD card over here. Here I am in my computer within Firefox. And what do you wanna do is head over to Seed Signer's website. So that is seedsigner.com. Here we are on seedsigner.com. And what I wanna do is open this link in a new tab, view the project on GitHub, and open download the latest release in a new tab as well. So first we're going to head over to this releases tab and download the latest release. So we're just gonna scroll down until we see assets. Then you'll need to download Seed Signer for whatever Raspberry Pi you have. So I have the Pi Zero. So I'm going to download this over here by clicking on it. And there we can see Seed Signer is downloading to my downloads. Now we also wanna verify that this software we have downloaded is authentic. So I'm also going to download this here, the SHA-256 file and the SHA-256.sig file also to my downloads. So if I go to Finder, look in my downloads, here we can see all the files are ready to go. I did download the Seed Signer twice, so I'm just gonna move this one to bin. And here we can see all three files are ready to go. Now we need to look for the verification instructions. So I'm going to go to Seed Signer's GitHub over here and just scroll down all the way until I see this, verifying that the downloaded files are authentic. Before you do this, you will need GPG downloaded. So if you open this in a new tab, you will need to download this onto your computer. In my case, I like to use GPG tools. So just search GPG tools and it will be this, gpgtools.org. So once you go ahead and download the suite from here by clicking download, you will have this GPG keychain on your application. So if I click on this, this will be my keychain, which we will use shortly. So I'm going to go back to the verification instructions over here. And step one is to import their key. So what we're gonna do is open our terminal. I like to just search terminal over here. Then we need to copy this line, paste it in our terminal and click return. And now it is requesting the key and here we can see the key was imported. So if I go to my keychain, we can see we now have seed sign is key. But now this could just be any random key. We need to make sure that it is actually Seed Signer's key. So to do this, we're going to go to Seed Signer's Twitter, which is just at Seed Signer, and we're gonna see if these keys match. So here on Twitter, the key ends in 0726-0119, and it does as well over here, 0726-0119. We can also look a bit further back to make sure we've got 882E and C7EF, and if we look here, we can see those match. We're gonna take this one step further and also look on their twit on their key base. I mean, so here we are in key base. I'm gonna search seed signer. And it's this one at the top. Here we can see we are on seed signer's key base, and their key ends in 0726-0119. These keys match. 
You can take the steps further if you wish and check other sources of information. But that's enough for me. I, I'm pretty sure I've got the correct key here. Okay, so now that we've verified we have the right key, let's go back to their GitHub over here and look at the next step. What we need to do next is verify the .sig file. So in my finder, we need to verify that this is authentic. So to do this, we're gonna go back to the terminal. I'm going to run a line called clear just to get rid of all this mess. And here we have a nice fresh terminal. Now I need to tell the computer to look into this downwards folder so that it can see all these files over here. So I'm going to run CD, which means change directory. And I'm going to say downloads so that the computer looks into this downloads folder. And here we can see we are now looking into the downloads folder. Next, all I need to do is run this line over here. So I'm just gonna copy that, paste it into my terminal, click return. And we need to look out for good signature from and then the correct key. So as we can see here, I've got good signature from seed signer. And then we need to ensure that this key matches again. So let's open our keychain. And here we can see again, it ends in 0726, 0726 and 0119, which is the correct key. By the way, we can safely ignore this warning message over here. We can just disregard that and move on to the next step. So I'm going to scroll down to the next step and here it is step two, verifying the software image binaries are genuine. So all we have to do is again, copy this line. Then we paste it into our terminal, click return. And what it says here is we need to look for our file name and then okay at the end. So if we look at my terminal, this is the name of the software I downloaded and we've got an okay. So we know the software we have downloaded is authentic. Okay, so now in my downloads, we know that this software I have downloaded is authentic. So I can go ahead and delete these two files here. All I need is this. My SD card is now plugged in and now we need to actually flash this seed signer software onto our SD card. So to do this, we're just gonna scroll down to the Lena Etcher over here. We will need this software on our computer. So I'm going to open this link in a new tab over here. And I'm just going to download Etcher for whatever operating system I'm on. So I am on Mac OS. So I'm going to click on download over here. And there we can see Belina Etcher is now downloading onto my computer. Belina Etcher is fully downloaded. So I'm just going to run this file over here and drag this to my applications. I'm gonna quickly fill in my password. I filled in my password and now Belina Etcher has been added to my application. So if I open my applications, here at the top we will see I have Etcher. So I'm going to run this application now. It's going to say this is downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? I'm going to open it anyway. And here we have Belina Etcher up and running. Belina Etcher was not working on my YouTube Mac account. So I quickly switched to my main administrator account. Okay, here I am on my main Mac account. Let's try this again. I'm going to click flash from file, then select the seed signer download. Now I'm going to select the SD card as my target and then click flash. And then it says Belina Etcher would like to access files on a removable volume. I'm going to select okay to allow it to go ahead and do the flash. And there we go, it says flash completed meaning that my SD card now has the seed signer software on it. Now we can go ahead and actually build the device. Before we start the build, let me first mention that seed signer is fully air gapped, meaning that there's never a need to connect to Wi-Fi or plug the device into a computer. However, my Raspberry Pi board does have Wi-Fi capabilities. To ensure that it is never able to connect to Wi-Fi, I'm going to remove a part from the board. To read more about removing this and how it works, I will leave a link below showing the research done by DT. And you can see Seed Sana verifies that it works themselves on Twitter. I will also leave a link below. So this little part that I'm pointing at right there needs to come off to remove the Wi-Fi capability. So I'm gonna try to do this with some tweezers. I don't have pliers, so let's give this a go. And there we go. We got the part off there, so you will notice now that the piece that was over here is now gone. So that should have removed the Wi-Fi capability. What we're gonna do now is a quick pre-assembly without putting the parts in this case, 
just so we can make sure everything is operational. So first we want to grab our Raspberry Pi board and take a look on this side here. We need to open this little bar over here, just like that, nice and gently so we don't rip it right off. There we can see it is now open. And then we're going to slide our camera into the bar there. So in my case, the Raspberry Pi board is facing up and we need the brown part to face up as well. So I'm going to slide this camera in just like that. And now I'm going to close the seal by applying pressure on both sides. And there we go, the camera has been closed into the board there. Next, we need to attach our screen. So what I'm going to do is align these pins on the board with the screen over here, just like this, and then just apply a little bit of pressure so that we can push the components together, just like that there. So that board is now in, and we can see if we put the camera like this, it will be facing away from the board so that when it's in the case, it will be pointing out at the bottom here. Cool, so this seat sounder should be fully operational now. We just need to put in our SD card. So I'm going to slide that into the SD card slot on the side over here, and we're going to power this thing up. Okay, here I have my power cable, and at the top is our port. So I'm going to put the power cable in, just like that. And now we need to give the seed signer 30 to 50 seconds just to boot up. There we go, the seed signer logo has appeared, which is a good sign. We just need to wait for it to open the home screen. And there we go, we're in the home screen. So everything looks good so far. We're just going to open our settings quick. Um, to select an option, you need to push this button inwards. I'm gonna push that in. And we need to scroll down to IO test and then click in again. And now we can just test that all our buttons and components here are working. So first we need to push left and we can see it, it responds. Right works, bottom works, top works. Now I'm going to push this button in on the left and that works. Now key one will open our camera. So let's see if that camera works. There we go, it managed to capture an image. So that works. Key two will be to clear the image. So let me click key two the image cleared, and finally key three is to exit. And that worked. So this seed signer seems to be fully operational. We're gonna go ahead now and throw it in one of these cases. First, I have to disassemble it before we can put it in the case. So I'm going to remove the SD card and the power there. Now we're going to gently remove this. We don't wanna break any pins. So I go side by side slowly, there we go. Then we're going to get loosen the seal up and the camera should slide right out just like that. And there we go, now we can go ahead and actually assemble this thing in one of these cases over here. So I think the black one looks pretty cool. We're going to put it in the black case and the first thing we need to do again is just to attach this camera. So again, we need to just loosen this bar here just like that. And then we're going to insert the camera with the brown portion facing up with the board facing up. So there we can see the back has a bit of a golden color. We need the brown facing up with the board so that when it's inserted and we flip this around, the camera faces away from the board. So let's go ahead and slide this in just like that. And then I'm going to seal this so the camera is in nice and tight. And there we go, that has been sealed. Now it's time to put this Raspberry Pi and camera into the case. So first we wanna find out which way to put it and we can do that by looking at these ports here. So we've got three ports over here and the Raspberry Pi has these three ports here. So we need to make sure these line up just like that. So we're going to insert the board this way. First we need to put our camera in. So I'm going to be using a bit of Prestic. I don't know, I think it's called a blue tack in other countries, but in South Africa, we call this Prestic. And I'm going to just put it right here to hold the camera in place, just like that. 
Now I'm going to again make sure this lines up with the ports. Then I'm going to fold the camera like this, line it up with the hole like that, and then press down on the press stick so it sticks into place. So I have stuck that camera into place and now I need to slide this board in. So we need to do this at an angle just like this and then push down to get that into place. And you'll hear a few clicks to, that will tell you it's in good. So yeah, that looks to be good to me. Let's take a look at these ports. Those look like they're in place and the SD card port also looks good. So our Raspberry Pi board is in successfully and the camera looks good as well. It is a bit uneven, but that's fine with me. Next, we're going to attach our screen. So again, we line the pins up with the board. So let me line that up just like that. And now we just need to apply pressure so that the two components join each other. And there we go. Our screen is now attached and all our ports look good. And our seed sign is ready to go. Let's put in the SD card and boot this thing up. Here is my SD card. Now, one thing you don't want to do is by mistake, lose this SD card in the board. You wanna make sure it's in the slot there. So really line that up like that and then insert that because if you lose this SD card in here, it's quite a mission to get that out. You have to disassemble the whole board. So now that our board is ready and we have the SD card in, let's go ahead and power this thing on. I'm going to put the power cable back in the top left and we're gonna give it 30 to 50 seconds to boot up. And there we go. Our seed signer has booted up We'll give it a few more seconds to go to the home screen. And here we are at the home screen. So now we're going to quickly do another test just to make sure nothing broke while we were setting this thing up. I'm going to go back to settings, then scroll down to IO test, then test all the components. So left works, right works, bottom works, top works. Now I'm going to push this in. That's working good. Let's give the camera a test. I'm going to click on this. And there we go, we can see it has taken a photo of the wood here. Key two should clear this, and then key three to exit. And yep, everything looks operational. After setting up my seed signer, I did notice that the camera is actually upside down. So if I open it here, we can see it says hello, but the camera reads it upside down. So to fix this, we can go over to our settings. Then we need to click on advanced, then we need to scroll all the way down until we see this here, camera rotation. So I'm gonna click on that and rotate the camera 180 degrees. Now we want to make sure this setting saves. So I'm going to exit advanced over here. And then here I am in the settings screen again, and I'm going to click on this persistent settings and I'm going to enable this so that it stores my settings in my SD card over here. So I'm going to enable that now exit my settings again. And if we open our camera, we can see it now reads it in the correct way. Cool, so that is how to build a seed signer. And in my next few videos, I'll show you how to actually use the thing with wallets like Sparrow Wallet and Blue Wallet and so on.